Hi, I'm Sarah Winkless, patron of the SHA, and welcome to My Shape Talk. My Shape Talk today is about resilience. What is resilience to me? Well, it's not something that you're born with. I know that for sure. It's something that you can develop and grow. I certainly had to learn to develop and grow my own resilience as I grew up in a Huntingdon's family and sometimes things were a little bit tricky. And also I chose to pursue a career as an elite athlete and I went to three Olympic games, a lot of world championships and I had to learn to be at my best when it really, really mattered to me. And that was something I had to learn and grow and practice and I got better at. To me, resilience is a little bit like imagining you've got a bucket. You have a certain amount at any time and then things happen that punch holes in your bucket and water starts to come out. Now, how do you get more resilience? Well, you put more water in the top of the bucket. And that's how I kind of think about it. I recognise on any given day, how much resilient, how much water in my bucket do I have at the moment? How many holes are there? And what do I need to do to put more water in? And the things I think about to put water in my bucket are spiritual, physical, emotional, and mental. And if I can get those four things into the top of my bucket, pouring a little bit each day, I know that I can be at my best and I can manage and rebound and respond in the way I want to. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because I talk about rebound, not just managing to deal with everything. Sometimes you think about, you have to be, to be resilient, you have to be strong. Now you'd be like a, an oak tree that can just deal with everything. But the thing about an oak tree is when the wind gets really strong, after hundreds of years, it, it falls over because it can't hold against the tide anymore. And sometimes I look and think about it as bamboo instead. Imagine a bamboo, the wind comes and hits that, the storm comes, and the bamboo just flexes. It waits until the storm abates and springs back up. And for me, that is sometimes also you know, what I try to do. What's a day that I can't actually manage anything more? So thinking of my different facets, spiritual resilience, that would be different for everybody. But here's things, some things I do that you could give a try. And for me, there's something about being in the outside world that really fills my soul. I spiritually love um, the, the outside environment. And I know going for a walk or maybe getting outside will really help me. I also love to see things grow, the earth change. And do you know what? I talk to, to plants as much as I talk to people um, and tell them what I, what's going on for me because sometimes that really helps my spirit too. Other people I know will, will use religion and that's really, really important to them. It's what's right for you. Lots of things you can try. Physical resilience was something I spent 21 years of my life developing. I used to train pretty much every day and I had people to support me doing that. Now I've retired from elite sport, it's not the same anymore for me. And it's part of my life, not my life. But what I learned from that was the more you do, the more you stress our bodies, the more it bounces back and, and recovers and responds and you get more energy. They say energy begets energy. And what that simply means is the more you do, your body responds from it and the more you'll be able to do. For my physical resilience now, I think about shed. Four simple letters that you know you need to keep in order. The first one is sleep. Um, sleep is so important and it really does help our minds and our bodies recover and renew and refresh. It helps us learn better and making sure that for my physical resilience to be in good shape, I've got that S of my shed sleep in the best state I can have it. And it's really tempting at the moment, I think, when we don't have a timetable in the same way to not really manage our sleep in the way you might want to. And I know there are other shape talks about getting enough sleep. So if that's something you've thought about, please go and look at that resource too. The H of shed is a simple one. Hydration, H2O, water. Our bodies are 70% water, which always amazes me. I always think, which bit 
Um, I guess it's in every cell, but your brain is 80% water. Um, and it's really important that you, you take enough on in, in a day. One or two litres even is, is what is recommended. And I hate to say this, but fizzy drinks, tea, coffee, whilst you might want to have the odd one of those, they're not going to help with the H of your shared hydration. You really do want to be drinking water, milk, something like that, which will help. The E of shed is exercise. Thinking about making sure you're exercising or active throughout the day. Once again, it's been really challenging to keep my exercise up during lockdown. I've been doing some circuits with some friends, but actually think about how can you get some exercise or activity into your day? And it might be as simple as thinking about standing up or sitting down like this. You know, four, three, or two times just to get a little bit of movement. That could be enough activity to get something moving. And actually, even now, I can feel that in my legs. And the D of shed is diet. Making sure we get the right food in to give our physical resilience the optimum amount. And really about this, I think about you know, there is calories, of course, that's important, you need to eat enough, but eat the rainbow. Make sure you're getting enough colours in your diet, and I don't mean of the skittle variety, I mean of the fruit and veg. So you make sure that you're, you're giving yourself as much as you can, some of your five pieces of fruit and veg a day, to make sure that you have the right nutrients um, for your body. Emotional resilience for me is the biggest challenge, it's the biggest journey I've had to go on. The things I said to myself, I probably would never have said to any other human being. I, I gave myself a really hard time often. I think the Buddhists talk about this, about one dart, two darts. Something goes wrong, it's the first dart. You know, you don't have the impact you want on someone else. Something goes wrong between a friendship. You don't maybe get the result you want at school or in sport or in music or anything else that you're, you're doing. That's the first dart, something's gone wrong. And then the second dart is what we say to ourselves about it, how we beat ourselves up about it. And, and I used to do that, I used to do that a lot. And I thought it made me stronger, I thought it made me better at what I did. But also I realise now that it took away energy from me. I, if I could find myself focusing on the things I did right, three good things that I could keep, and then one thing that I could improve, that might have been better for me than thinking about all the things that went wrong. When thinking about emotional resilience, there's a few things you could try. Definitely try three things that have gone well each day, three things that you're grateful for, three things that actually make you feel happy and try and find things that do that, topping up the water of your emotional resilience. And our fourth jog, if you like, is mental resilience. Being really challenged uh, mentally at the moment might be uh, something that you're struggling with. You haven't got the timetable that you usually have. You're having to find the energy yourself to do your schoolwork or you know, doing anything else you have to do rather than having a timetable. A lot of us are, are working from home and, and I think that's um, really challenging. When it comes to mental resilience, my favourite story around this is an Indian um, Cherokee folk tale. In this folk tale, the, um, there's a really old Cherokee chief. It's an old man and he has his granddaughter come and see him and she's just uh, knee high to him. And she comes and, and sits on his lap and she asks him, Granddad, what's the secret of life? And he looks at her and he says, in each one of us, there's two wolves. There's the wolf of greed and evil and self-doubt and jealousy. And then there's the wolf of gratitude and joy and generosity and love. And in us, those two worlds are fighting. And she looks at him and just goes, 
But Granddaddy, which, which one wins? And what do you think this wise old Cherokee Indian chief said? He looked at her and said, my, my, my dear, the one we feed. And when we're looking at our mental resilience or emotional fit resilience, I think that story is just perfect. What are we feeding? Are we feeding the joy, the life, love, the gratitude in us each day and letting that wolf win? Or are we not and making another choice? You could try feeding your wolf of love and gratitude and joy each day. So just to finish up, I'd love to give you some top tips on resilience, just things you can try. What is it like to be more like a bamboo than an oak tree? Not trying like an oak tree to absorb everything and be strong all the time, but like a bamboo and flexing and moving as things happen and knowing when we can stand up and hold ourselves fully high with resilience and when we might need to flex and wait for our energy to come back to us. Think about the bucket that you have of resilience. We know things happen that punch holes in it that will allow the water to fall out. Make sure that you're not punching too many holes in your own buckets by what you're saying to yourself. Make sure that you are giving yourself enough energy and time to fill up your own resilience, thinking about your mental, physical, spiritual and emotional resilience. What's one thing you could do each day that will put water into your bucket? And one thing perhaps you'll stop doing that is uh, maybe been punching a hole in your bucket and letting your water and resilience out. And finally, please remember, resilience is not something that you're born with. It's something that you can develop and grow. And some days you'll feel hugely resilient and other days perhaps not so much. And that's normal. On those days where you feel not so resilient, how can you be really kind for yourself and think about topping up the resilience into the top of the bucket and ensuring that you're avoiding maybe things that might be punching holes in it. Thank you. It's been really great talking to you today. Shape would like to thank Sarah for taking part in this Shape Talk. We hope you have found it useful. If you liked our video and want to help other people find it, please like, share or comment below. And we'll see you next time on Shape Talks.